Hello everyone, welcome back to Parkitect campaign mode as we power through the last few maps that we need to do. Today is going to be silica slopes. So you acquire a small plot of land in a desolate forested valley. Use what little space you have at your disposal to build a charming amusement park. You can buy more land to expand the park, but you cannot get any loans. That's going to be a struggle because I like using loans. <laughs> Um, the goals are to have 450 guests in the park, park rating of 85% and the optional of 250 guests in the park by the end of July year 4. It doesn't sound too difficult, but from what I remember this is quite a small plot of land that we get, so let's get into it. Here we are then, the silica slopes. Let's have a quick look at what we've got. So it literally is just this small space here and obviously the terrain is quite difficult to work with. Um, I think we'll use that to our advantage uh, when it comes to building coasters and theming. Uh, let's see what we can buy. So we can buy all this land here and we can buy this land here. So not a huge amount to work with. Um, but it doesn't require a huge amount of guests. 450 isn't too bad for this stage in the playthrough. Um, so I don't, I don't think we'll struggle too much in terms of that. It's just working out how to build with this limited space and terrain. So the rides we've got Carousel, Ferris Wheel, Swinging Ship, a Mini Coaster and Steel Coaster. No Transport and a Paddle Boats. Oh, I don't know. I think we should research thrill rides to start with. Maybe coasters. Let's start with thrill rides and see how we get on. I'm going to keep the research amount low because we need to do this on quite a budget by the looks of things if we can't get any loans. And we've got 15,000 to work with. So not a huge amount to start with either. Um, I think I'm just going to have to build the park up slowly and um, see how it goes really so I'll see you all over in the first time lapse welcome into the first time lapse of silica slopes and the first thing I wanted to do is make a rough layout of the entrance building and the sort of main street we're building a small little fantasy style town here but I thought the best way to make use of the space would be to lay out where I want all the buildings to go and then work on the gameplay a bit so that we've got some money to work with before going back and theming everything. So yeah, we just make a start with some rough white boxes and some path work. I mean, the path's going to stay roughly as it is anyway, because I think it looks absolutely fine. I'm trying to do a small little fantasy style village for this main street. And um, I think it works quite well how it curves off to the right and we've made a really good use of space in this area, leaving plenty of space for the coasters and rides and everything like that. Um, trying to keep everything fairly small as well so that it all fits in nicely where we're limited for space in this map. But yeah, I think it's quite a good way to build, just laying out boxes of where you want to build things is a technique that I've been doing a little bit more recently. Um, it's probably a more efficient way of building than just to plonk down buildings and hope that they all work together in the space that you've got, I suppose. And then the first thing that I start working on properly is this entrance building, which we don't always do for the campaign maps, but I felt like this one could use a nice sort of welcoming entrance so I built these spires using the the spire piece and a load of um, chimneys and it actually worked out rather well I wanted to do some custom tiling but couldn't find a way to do it with basic shapes using the grid spaces that we've got the height difference and stuff like that didn't really work very well so I just opted into do the detailing with chimneys instead as you do and yeah I'm quite happy 
with the end result of this and obviously the, the colours all work together quite well. Sort of remind me a little bit of Ratatouille actually in Disneyland Paris randomly. That wasn't the intention at all but it sort of fits the fantasy vibe that we're going for I guess. And I have to be very honest I've broken a promise that I made in the last one uh, which was that I wasn't going to use the nice stylized pillars as um, tops of spires again or I wasn't going to use them in this build but it just looked too good to not so <laughs> yeah I, I went ahead and and used them and I think they complete the build I think they look good then I went over and put a carousel in as per standard um, I think I put these in all my parks but it's, you've definitely got to have one in a fantasy style park like this. There's going to be lots of um, small flat rides, like calm rides and family friendly sort of attractions, in, especially in this area of the park. I do build some more thrilling rides later on as well, but we will get to that. You can see I've also put a Ferris wheel down and a pirate ship just to start earning a little bit of money. Um, these do stay, but we obviously work a later on on making the fit in a little bit nicer into the area. So um, yeah, this is just just really to start getting a bit of guest count and with the limited funds as well. Um, I've, I've had to be really careful with what I was building. So I put in this placeholder uh, steel coaster which has the worst layout you've ever seen. Don't worry, this doesn't stay like it is. I do make a much better layout later on. You can see there I'm uh, heading towards imminent bankruptcy. I think I actually had to delete the Ferris wheel in order to open this ride, just so I had enough money for queue paths. Because um, with 15 grand and no loans, it is pretty tight for money to try and get some rides and coasters into the park. I probably should have put the rides in before making the entrance building, but you know how it goes. You get carried away sometimes with theming stuff. So yeah, and that's what I've got. A very, very, very small launched steel coaster layout to bring some money in. Um, it reaches a high excitement, I believe, so it's fine. I can charge £10 for it and start making some money. I did also, for some reason, make the mistake of giving the track a gradient colour and wasting a load of time on that, which I then realised was pointless because the layout will get scrapped anyway later on, but I did it anyway, so there you go. As you can see now, we've got a magic carpet as well, so started researching some of the flat rides, and that worked out pretty well in this area of the park. We're going to give it a loose sort of um, magical theme to fit in with all the fantasy stuff that we're going to be building. And with that in place, we started to make a small amount of money. So I was able to buy a little bit more land. And then when I saved up a bit more, I was able to do a proper layout for this coaster. So I decided to go for very terrain conforming, not traditional layout I suppose but a steel coaster without any inversions and I feel like this worked out quite well just to do something a bit different I did play around there with putting some inversions in I think maybe I did have one maybe I had a corkscrew in the end I can't remember or maybe yeah maybe I decided on helix, a helix there instead in the end but this um coaster sort of wang wrangles its way in and out of itself um, several times and just does loads of helixes and some good airtime moments and that's pretty much all there is to it. There's a coaster at Liseberg in Sweden which sort of sprung to mind when I was building this. Um, it wasn't inspired by it or anything but it sort of reminded me a bit of it. It's not uh, not helix but it's the one I believe 
it's a, a Heiberer Schwarzkopf or something like that. And it has like two helixes that run alongside each other um, along a hillside. And I think it looked pretty cool. And this, yeah, this layout reminded me a little bit of that. Not that it's, you know, exactly the same or anything, but I think it's kind of similar. I then finished the layout with a helix around the entrance plaza or entrance area. And I think that's quite a cool touch because it builds up that excitement as soon as you enter the park. You can, oh, someone's at my front door. Bear with me. Right, it's a good job I went for that because it was a parcel and it would have gone back to the depot if I didn't. <laughs> so, yes, I, I mean I could edit that out with, with the power of power of editing, but why not? Let's just keep it keep this footage raw <laughs> and as, as as it happens, you know. So um, going back to the build, you can see I'm tweaking a bit the first curve drop and. I, th I think I raised the lift hill a bit because there were some moments on the layout where it's just running too slow or maybe it didn't make it over one of the hills or something so yeah I think that was that was um, the reasoning behind that and then I'm just sorting out some of these tunnels because obviously they don't look good when you've got a tunnel sticking a long way out we're gonna have to cover quite a few of them up anyway but I just wanted to tidy it up a little bit before I worked on the next thing. And yeah, the next thing to do is make a station for the coaster. So the first attempt I had at the station, I wasn't at all happy with. The colours and the textures just didn't work for me in the theme that I wanted to go for. I did come up with some walls which I've actually cut out of this footage um, that I might use later on somewhere in the build but they didn't quite work for what I wanted here and this roof almost felt a little bit too too much like a, a haunted house style roof with the colours and um, pieces that I used so yeah in the end I just scrapped it um, especially with the sort of purple track as well and that's another thing I will go back at some point and do the gradient for the coaster because I think that looked really good before with the little small layout that we had before but yeah moving on to the station that we see if you follow the channel you might have seen that I've posted a an update about this well not about it to say that I'm doing a build but um, a picture of this station and yeah that's pretty much the complete station and what we stick with and in the end I went for some pink roofs and they were just inspired by concept art for fantasy star buildings really nothing too specific um, but I wanted to get in some different colored windows which I thought was quite a fun idea so almost like the kind of stained glass and it's made me think that at some point I want to do some sort of cathedrally churchy type thing with stained glass windows but that's um, that's for another day maybe in this build I'm not sure but um, anyway these are the windows that I put in and then just using pillars to cover them up nicely obviously all done with the windows from the latest update that we got um, which works perfectly to get a few different shapes with your windows and things like that so yeah that's looking pretty good obviously I'm layering up some of the roofs so we've got the half slope and the full slope and then basically you have to cover up the front bit there so that it doesn't look like it's overlapping and it just gives the idea that it's more of a curved roof even though it isn't but I think it works quite well and then by this point I thought this looks like it could be a sort of elven style build um, so I end up building a tiny little elven village around the queue line which I may expand upon a bit later on in the build but yeah I was quite pleased to say that by happy accident I managed to create a theme that works well and that ties in 
well with all the other fantasy stuff that we're doing. And uh, when I say fantasy, we're not going for your typical medieval style fantasy stuff. Um, it's more like the Disneyland fantasy. If you think of uh, the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World and all the fantasy stuff that they've got there after you cross through underneath the castle. Um, more of like the kids area, even though the whole park's pretty much a kids area. But yeah, the, the, the stuff like around um, Seven Dwarves Mine Train and rides like that. Not exactly like that style of theming, but along those lines, I guess, is the sort of thing that we're loosely going for. I tried to do a bit of detailing there on the um, on the trims as well. Felt that it wasn't really working, so I just left that. And I feel like an open coaster station with lots of different elements to it like this does take quite a bit of time to complete when you're doing, um, obviously, custom pillars and things like that with the basic shapes as well. So I do a lot of blueprinting to speed things up. But yeah, it did take quite a bit of time. I sort of had, uh, I was doing this where I had that Monsters documentary on in the background on Netflix. That's a really good program, but uh, we won't get into that. Um, I'm going to actually continue watching it now without playing Parkitect at the same time. Because um, it takes my concentration away a bit from gaming when there's something that I kind of get into that I didn't intend to get into. But yeah, you can see um, we've pretty much finished the station now, so it's a case of placing down trees and foliage and making everything look nice and tied in together. I'd imagine there'll be quite a bit of rock work around the coaster as well, just to cover up the uh, tunnels and stuff like that. But at this point, we called that a day and moved on to the main street because I was fed up with these plain white buildings and I wanted to get started on it. So yeah, I actually really struggled to find any reference images to go off for this main street because everything fantasy I searched for was, like I said before, the medieval style stuff. So yeah, I didn't want to go down that route. So I ended up just sort of winging it really and building stuff that I thought looked kind of cool. Um, so lots of window boxes, lots of fantasy roofs, lots of spires, all the usual sort of good stuff really. Trying to vary the wall textures a bit as well and the roof textures so that um, it doesn't all look too samey and then getting some windows in on a diagonal which obviously have to be done custom. I did very very basic ones with with basic shapes there and give them some basic shape warnings. I think that works fine. I don't bother doing the back of this yet, which will need to be done. It can't just be a backstage area because there's a lots, there's, you know, there's areas where the guests walk around. So, and, you know, can't really fit a backstage in there or anything, but that will be something that I'll look into in other sections. We've actually sort of, covered up on the other side of the main street we've covered up the depot and we're gonna all the, have all the staff stuff in there so it that worked out really well because it saved me having to put a depot anywhere and I could put all the food stalls and gift shops and everything in this section so from the get-go really there's pretty much everything that the guests need for their first hunger and happiness etc and moving on to the the third or fourth building or whatever we're on now blue fantasy roof and a sunken in balcony just to off grid it a bit um, to the best of my ability anyway and then changing the colors up a bit so we're using some pinks and a darker sort of wall texture for the bottom section Putting in the boring standard door, but I couldn't think what else to do there. Um, and some nice window boxes. That pretty much concludes this building. And then the final building is actually just home to a toilet block. So I didn't do anything too crazy with it at all. Just used some um, curved 
trim pieces or borders or whatever and tried to use them in a way that looked nice. Struggled a bit to decide how to go about that, but yeah, not overly crazy about this one, but it works out fine and is really just a simple building at the end of the day. So that's it for the first time lapse. I'll see you over in the real time section. Okay, so I noticed during editing that I had a slight issue with the sound quality in the start of this video, especially in the intro where the sound quality was really muffled. So I do apologize for that. Hopefully it will be a bit better moving forward now. So here's what we've got so far. You can see our steel coaster. We are charging 12 quid ahead for this one. There's three trains running on it. Extreme excitement. Um, with a low intensity, but um, I, I think it's a good layout. Notice it's stopping there, which it wasn't doing before. Um, I don't know, it's not stopping for long, so I'm going to leave it for now. Um, anyway, this is the rest of the park, so that's where we're at so far. Um, it's amazing when you think that you've built absolutely loads, and then you realise that you've only sort of done less than half of the area and um, so there's still all this to work on but yeah i think we're getting there we've done a small portion of the park but it's not going to be a huge park anyway and we'll try and cram a coaster in at the back here and that's really all we've got room for one more coaster i'm going to need to get some more thrill rides in probably as well because we're on 181 guests and the target is 450 so we're quite far off the target at the moment but um yeah we'll see how we're doing when we've got another coaster in which will probably be in the next time lapse section i hope to have only one more time lapse in this build um, before we finish the park so closer look at the main street then this is what we've got so far and obviously our entrance building i did also make a small ticket booth as well because i thought the entrance building looked a bit odd on its own i was thinking of giving it a bit more of a shape but didn't really have room so i just thought to make it fit in a bit better we'll do some tickets and ticket booths um, and then you can see underneath all the shops and underground pathways and everything for the staff members for the haulers and whatnot if we go around as well you can see how this all works as a backstage so it's right next to the main depot and we've got a couple of shops here connected straight away for anything else they just cross under this path and they can access these ones as well the staff room is somewhere underground here so it's all functioning pretty nicely um, and i think yeah in the next section i'm just going to continue working on this main street and getting it all finished off and then look to do another coaster we've researched loads of coasters so we've got plenty of choice and we can we can use the inverted double swing but i think it might be worth researching a couple more thrill rides for some reason i've got it on shops now um, we're into year seven so i've done quite a lot of research already and because of that we've also made quite a bit of money even though it's slowly coming in 637 pound a month but um yeah we've made 37 grand so we shouldn't struggle too much on the money side of things it's just seeing what else we can cram into this small map so I'll see you back over in the next time lapse. Welcome back to the time lapse and we're going to continue working on the main street, our little village that we've got going on here. The first building come together a lot quicker in this time lapse than it actually took in real time. I've cut out quite a lot of the footage for this area because the whole video and the speed build was getting too long. And I wanted to keep things under an hour, so you're just seeing the very basics. I cut from one building to the next, 
Um, just continuing the theme really that we've got on the other side of the main street. Lots of little fancy roofs and sticking out roofy bits, <laughs> to use a technical term. And dormers and chimneys and things like that. Quirky little details that work nicely. Um, I changed the layout a little bit with the backstage for this part as well because it wasn't really working out uh, the way I had it before. So I've just covered that all over with a roof behind, but that's not too important. Moving on to the next building then, this is more of your traditional little fantasy style house. Um, this is just a facade, it's a show building, that, well not a show building, just a facade with nothing inside it really. And using some basic shapes to add a little bit more detail to the door rather than using the plain ordinary boring doors that I use all the time. And then doing a similar thing with the windows. Nothing too uh, spectacular here. Really simple stuff. And it's quite difficult, I find, when you're building a village or a little town like this to get variety in your buildings. And that is something I tend to struggle with. I also completely forgot to do anything with the um, spire in the middle there, so it's just floating at the moment. I think I do go back and change that. Uh, at a later stage, I don't just leave it floating there. Hopefully, anyway, I can't really remember uh, what I did exactly for this part. Um, so, moving on to the next building, then it's a corner building, so it's a little bit more difficult to work with because of the shape. So, we're just using some basic shapes and pillars to give it a tiny bit more detail. This is a very, very simple building, I don't add too much to it at all. I do go back a bit later on actually and add some adventure roof um, pyramid pieces because it just sort of fitted quite nicely for this area. Um, and as we move up the main street at the top we've got the magic carpet so I wanted to sort of move the fairy tale story to like your Aladdin type story and do a bit more of the Arabian style theming. but. Not in a big way, just enough to sort of replicate what this um, area is meant to be. So with using, you know, using the sort of blues and the, the golds and colours like that that fit nicely with the theme of the ride as well. So the more I thought about it, the more this, this park can really represent different fairy tales. But I'm not doing anything specific. Um, I'm just trying to get the general idea of each theme. You know, I'm not going to build a big set pieces or props or anything because I'm not very good at that sort of thing um, but the final um, the final ride that we put in really is this um, standout sort of coaster which is going to be the Eurofighter or the Infinity Coaster whatever one that Gershlau makes um, I tried first of all to do it with the Flawless Coaster and that just wasn't working for the layout that I wanted. I didn't really have enough room to make a layout that looked half decent. Um, I already had in my mind an idea of how all this was going to work and you can see me sort of laying things out and putting placeholders down there to try and get an idea of it but basically I wanted a half loop that comes out of the front and then goes inside a building through this big cutout section that we're using the, the circle for. And that was the idea of it. Again, really technical there with my words. Um, but I wanted it to be a, a castle sort of facade as well. And doing some custom windows and stuff like that that we can now do with the pieces that we've got in vanilla. Uh, we can really take things to the next level now. And uh, we'll come back to that in just a sec when I start working on the facade. But at the moment I'm just doing the layout and we actually had a very small amount of room to work with here for this layout so I have to cram it into a small footprint and it did take quite a lot of bit of work to get the layout exactly how I wanted it's difficult always when you start with a section of the coaster that you want to you know build from rather than starting with the station so what I've done here obviously I wanted that element in and I wanted to place it in that particular position so I then had to work the rest of the layout around it but it, it worked out alright in the end um, we've got a somewhat believable albeit not particularly realistic layout 
um, lots of spaghetti track. Plenty of helixes um, weaving in and out of each other and lots of inversions and it turned out to be quite an intense ride as well so it drawed quite a lot of guests in and helped me to complete the goals. Um, I apologise if I'm repeating myself at all at any point here by the way because I've just had to go back and cut a bit of commentary and start again due to sound problem there which I tend to be having quite a lot of recently which is annoying. Anyway... Um, Back to topic, so now I'm starting to work on the facade, um, again using the same technique that I did for the Main Street Village, which is just to place down lots of basic shapes before going in and detailing everything, and that works out perfectly for a building of this size with the details that we've got on it. I find it very easy to get overwhelmed by uh, building structures like this in the game. Um, and trying to get scaling and everything right, but I think it works out pretty well doing it this way um, Obviously, I'm using lots of pentagon type shapes there and Using this the cylinder type things for windows and stuff like that Trying to get a little bit more creative with the way that I'm building stuff in the game and um, now that we have the capacity to do a little bit more um, custom made scenery items and Part the building parts and stuff like that so obviously you can see that I'm placing down some walls just to sort out some of the height differences uh, where the coaster goes in and out of tunnels and stuff like that um, it's not really a main focal point so I didn't spend too much time with that N you, you know not not that many people are going to be paying that much attention to what's going on behind all these uh, facades and when you're on the coaster you're going to be speeding past all them sections anyway, so you're not really going to notice. But just wanted to make it look reasonable for a um, for a top-down view when you're looking at it. So now you can see I'm working on the window, the big window, the main window. Uh, so this had to look good because it was sort of the highlight of the build. Um, and I did struggle actually as you can see just trying different different colors and different windows but obviously when they overlap you can't use different colors so I had to in the end I just decided one side is going to be one color and the other side will be another color apologies if you heard my phone go off then put it on silent um, but I thought that in the end we'll just do exactly what I did for the sort of Elven station um, and divide it up by pillars, which means you're not going to see the overlap, the windows, and it just works out a lot easier. So that's what I did in the end. I feel like this sort of technique could be taken to the next level as well. I can picture doing a big cathedral with stained glass windows that's actually a really cool idea um, I think we've got we've probably got some adventure pieces as well rather than using windows we could do it with like shiny adventure pieces and do something like that but that's another sort of idea for another build I guess but yeah you really can elevate what you're doing in vanilla now um, with the latest update there's some really useful pieces in there um, and I did touch on earlier the fact that I use the new pillars in this build when I promised that I wouldn't. Um, that promise has gone completely out of, the, out of the window now, so don't trust me with anything that I say in future because I end up using that pillar in this build more than any other build I've ever used it in. Um, it just works absolutely perfectly for a fairy tale style theme and... Yeah, I have no shame in saying that I broke that promise and I don't care because that pillar is probably my new favourite piece and you'll see it getting placed in just a second actually because I'm working now on the spires and there we go, we're painting the pillars gold, placing them on top of the spire. I'm just using loads of shapes to try and add more detail where I can underneath the spires. It's difficult to think what to do when you're trying to decorate such a large area like these walls and these spires 
um, but the end result it works out pretty well layering everything up and using sort of gradients for for the details I think it you know gives it a bit more depth I suppose um, and then the next thing that I do is put the roof on so you can see this building's coming together a lot quicker now um, it took ages to do the window but then everything else seems to be falling into shape pretty quickly um, I do cut out most of the work that I did on the, the rear of this building because again it's just for tidying up purposes so it looks okay from a top down perspective but in real life it would probably just be a show building where they theme a very small portion of the building um, on the back and then hide the rest so you can't see it from the coaster but anyway moving on I'm now finishing off the path layout for the park so it turns out that there's actually a really small area of the park that guests can actually navigate um, that wasn't the intention it's just how things worked out with the limited space we have in this map and the terrain I thought we'll keep all the path work down at the bottom around the lake and then build up towards the coasters and yeah the layouts worked out fine even though I imagine if this park got busy it would be pretty crowded in here but yeah that doesn't matter too much I guess um, from a gameplay perspective so Moving on to the coaster station, and you can see I've used a uh, the text symbol and placed a symbol from the character map on it, which is something I've been doing quite a lot lately, and it works out quite well for getting different shapes that you, the, you know shapes that you could normally have in the game. Um, so I've decided to use it as another decorative window and torture myself by trying to place pieces all around it to make it fit in but I think it turns out really good it turns out really clean um, and again it's just working out where to place the windows I had to be really careful here because you can't just place them and then delete them if you're not happy with the positioning due to the text piece deleting itself and you don't want to keep replacing that because to be honest, I put it slightly off grid so that all the walls would sit behind it because it just makes it easier to place. So I had to just sort of place the windows and hope that they looked good how I placed them. And they were okay, so <laughs> I left them because I didn't want to tamper with it anymore. Um, and I just left it like that, really. And then the rest of this facade is just a bunch of borders. Um, or cornices or whatever they are placed in random different patterns to make the building look a little bit more fairy tale esque I think that works out pretty well actually and it sits quite nicely next to the big facade of the castle looks like maybe it's another part of this same castle or something like that and then I thought we need a different roof colour and then that's when I started playing around with the idea of using layered up roofs to get a few different textures in together. Um, I don't know why, it's not very realistic because you wouldn't see much of this from guest level in real life. But uh, from a top down view, a big roof like this can just look a little bit boring. So I thought I'm going to try and make it a bit more interesting. And then I copied the same idea over to the main roof as well a bit later on. But yeah, I think all these colours work well together. The dark blues and the orangey red colours. Along with the fairly plain uh, fairy tale-ish colours on the front of the castle. Obviously we've got some different coloured spires as well. So we're not just using the exact same colour everywhere. And I think that always makes a build look a little bit more interesting. If it's not just complete repetition of the same colour everywhere. Um, sorry if you heard the mouse clicking there, I had to check <laughs> that I was still recording. Um, this, this microphone tends to pick up all sorts of background noise. I do play about with the audio once it's, once it's sort of recorded. I play about in Audacity to try and get um, noise reduction and stuff like that. But 
yeah, it's never, you know, it's, it's not always perfect. Anyway, sorry, back to the build. Um, <laughs> marathon time lapse here. We are um, nearing the end of the speed build for the actual facades and all the beaming. Um, for the very simple reason that I cut an awful lot of it out. This did take a long time. Um, but there's some bits that I thought you don't need to see. This, I thought, was um, worth showing. So it's just the side of the coaster station. Obviously, where the queue comes around, we've got such a tight space to work with there. Because um, there's an inversion going over the queue path as well into a tunnel. So I had to make sure everything fitted there. And it just about managed to squeeze in. Um, so for the side of the building, nothing too clever. Just a few windows doing them the ordinary way because I didn't want it to take too long. So I thought the spires looked a bit plain, so I thought I will add some window balcony things to the spires. Nothing too crazy. Um, and then I just go around adding some lighting and stuff like that and some fencing to the queue path. I actually use the same lantern over and over again loads on this building because I think it looks perfect and adds more detail and obviously it's good for the lighting. Um, I feel like you can never go completely crazy with the lighting in vanilla. There's only so much you can do with it. But it, yeah, it's, it's fine what we've what we've got. Um, for what I need, I'm never really that fussed about nighttime mode in the game. I prefer daytime to be honest, but it is good to try and make sure you do a bit of lighting as well. Um, so working on support structure for this inversion because it's you know in plain sight from everywhere so it needed doing and then obviously because I did the one I had to then custom support the whole coaster because it wouldn't have been right to just custom support one inversion I, I can't do that um, a little bit of OCD there I guess doesn't let me do that so um, once again torturing myself with the custom supports and I did them all using cylinder shapes as well so I didn't even speed it up with pillars because um, I needed them to be a certain thickness. So that's it for the remainder really of this time lapse it's just doing supports. Um, I do polish off a couple of other parts of the park off uh, camera not recorded. Um, just because I thought there's a, a little bit more that I wanted to add to the park itself. Um, so we will jump over into a real-time section just after this time lapse is finished. Um, but I wanted to mention at the, um, we've hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel, finally, after like five years or so. Um, so that's a good milestone um, for the channel. And now there's something like, I think it's called a super like or something that people can buy. I'm not sort of um, begging for anyone to do that. I <laughs> have no idea really how, how it all works. Um, I know at some point you can put adverts on the channel or something like that. And um, you get a little bit of sort of income which helps towards continuing to do the videos. Um, but I don't think I'm at that stage yet. I think I need more watch hours or something like that. But yeah, it's interesting to see that uh, the channel's progressing. So thank you to everyone that has been watching um, up to this point, And hopefully long may the channel continue. So I'll see you over in the final live section. Here we are then in the final park tour, the final live section of Silica Slopes. This is our entrance area and as you can see we're about to beat the goals hopefully. Um, looking at it uh, we needed 450 guests, we've got 535 and we just need to hold it for another week really. Park rating should be fine because that's nice and high. So yeah just played a waiting game now while we do that we can take a little tour of the park so we've got our ticket booth here which I showed you um, earlier on obviously it's not functional purely aesthetical and then our entrance area here um, you'll notice I've added a couple of pillars to the pillars supports even to the coaster um, because it was just sort of floating in midair as it went over this entrance area um, not the tidiest but 
yeah, better than having nothing at all there, I suppose. I was thinking of move, removing a bit of path to allow for that, but I decided it wasn't the best uh, way to go about it. So here is our main street then, our little fantasy village, our little fairy tale village um, that we built earlier on in the episode. As you can see, that all looks pretty good. Uh, rather crowded around here, the whole park's rather crowded actually. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we haven't got the, the biggest sort of footprint for paths and stuff like that, but it's alright, they can all cram into the park and get on the rides. And this is the other side of the main street, which is a bit harder to see because the buildings are sort of towering over from the other side. You can see there the sort of pyramid detail added to this roof as well. We move up then, we've got our more sort of Aladdin style themed area. Added a little bit of clutter to this ride as well, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And um, yeah, you can see there's actually a snowman riding <laughs> on that uh, ride as well. So we've completed the goals um, at this point. So I'd, I'd say that they're pretty easy really. This was quite an easy park to complete. Um, which is, yeah, which is nice. We've had a few easy ones now actually. So I guess what remains will be challenging sort of going forward. Right, I've decided to ditch OBS once and for all and just deal with the fact that Bandicam unsyncs my sound a bit because I can fiddle about with that in editing software like I always have done because yeah, I'm just getting too frustrated I recorded the rest of this park tour and then watched it back and the video quality was awful even though I had it on high settings I'm sure maybe I've got the settings wrong but there's so much on there I'm not fiddling about with it anymore when I know that Bandicam works fine so I'm re-recording this second part of the park tour and hopefully you'll be able to see it in good quality like how I'm seeing it now. So yeah, a little rant about OBS causing me more dramas than it's worth. Um, back into the park tour then you can see now we're looking at our steel coaster and our small tiny little elven village and elven station. Uh, which I'm really pleased with how this all turned out. I think the colours work really well together. You can see I've actually added a bit of a gradient to the coaster as well, alternating between purples and blues. Um, here's a quick look at the stats of the coaster for anyone who wants to see them. Not a high intensity, this one. I guess it's because it doesn't have immersions, maybe. Um, but a good excitement rating. And this one's all about um, big helixes and airtime and interaction with itself diving in and out of tunnels I really like the layout for this one I think it's quite fun and yeah I think this would be a fun coaster to ride I'm not going to go into too much detail talking about every element of every coaster from now on because I know that my audio will unsync and it will just be a nightmare to uh, <laughs> You get everything in the right place so um, yeah that's just how it's going to be for now anyway but yeah this goes to help to build the park up to what it is now because it brought in a load of money it's running free trains as well which is really convenient really handy and um, yeah overall worked out pretty well with this one Moving on then, you can see we've got a couple of other rides as well. Uh, this Helter Skelter Spiral Slide I placed in. Uh, I put that in after the last time lapse because I felt we needed maybe one more ride in the park. We've got the Ferris Wheel over here that you've already seen. And we've got a pirate ship here. We've got a little lake in the middle which I think worked out quite nice. And you can also see a couple of other little details I've added since the last time lapse. So there's a little pavilion thing here. I've also added in a beanstalk. Which I thought would be quite fun, just to give a sort of reference to the fairy tale idea. Moving on to our star attraction, then our Gerslau coaster. Um, yes, <laughs> this turned out really well. I'm really happy with the facade and the interaction and the coaster layout itself. I think it was worth taking the time to build the custom supports as well, um, because we had a good end result. You can see there's some triggered effects as well 
uh, some smoke and some fire. It's kind of got a bit of a magical um, castle feel to it. Um, here's a look at the stats for this coaster then. And we've got an extreme excitement, a very high intensity. This coaster will be extremely intense in real life, I think. Let's take a quick ride on it. Uh, might be better to go here, actually. Quite difficult to know what angle to look at this one from, actually. But yeah, lots of um, inversions, including the two custom inversions after the first drop. That you wouldn't normally see, but I thought I'd play about with something a bit different. And lots of helixes and very intertwined with its own layout. But yeah, I was actually amazed that I could get all this to fit into the space that we had in this map. Because, um, yeah, it was tight, so it's, it's fitted into quite a small blueprint here. The second section of the ride isn't um, isn't as long as the first section, which means the brake timings aren't great, but it's fine. So that's it for this one, then. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with the way everything turned out. Uh, quite an easy map to meet the goals, like I said before. But I think we've got some really challenging ones on the way. Here's a look at the map in full. In all its glory. And I think everything works fairly well together. Um, it's a very, very compact park, but we've got our sort of elven area over here. We've got our magic magician area here, and then just the little fairy tale village here all around this lake. So yeah, quite a fun park. Um, I was going to say we'll do a night view to look at the lighting, but it's pretty dark anyway. So that's what we've got. Uh, lighting wise, pretty standard really. Nothing too spectacular. But it does the job. So with that, let's uh, exit the map. See what we've got next. So yeah, unfortunately, you don't get to see this building plop down here and land um, because I've already recorded this tour once. This is the second I'm doing it. So unfortunately, we missed that. Um, but there you can see Silica Slopes is complete with the one gold coin. And we move on next to either Disaster Peaks or Robo Park. But I think I'm going to do Disaster Peaks because it's uh, been there for a while. We've only just unlocked Robo Park. So, yeah, Disaster Peaks in the next one. Thank you very much for watching this one, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.